so students in this lecture we are going to learn about the entrance region how a flow basically enters a region but before we go for entrance region we should revise what is slip and what is no slip condition slip and no slip when we talk about slip it means that the fluid is slipping over each other so let's say i've got a pipe okay and a fluid with uniform velocity is entering this pipe so if i'm going to say that there is slipping it means that there is no friction when there is no friction then that fluid is going to slip it means that the velocity let's say from 0 to 0.1 would be 1 meter per second and then from here to here as well it would be 1 meter per second so it's going to be just a straight line velocity profile okay but what happens this is the case for no friction what happens if i have friction when you've got friction and let's say uniform velocity enters this pipe then what happens is that because of friction let's say this is 0.1 this is 0.2 so my fluid particle because of the friction cannot reach 0.2 earlier so it will stay here and then it is going to drag the other particle who is moving in front also backwards so in this way what is going to happen is that we are going to get a velocity profile due to shear effects as a no slip condition okay and this velocity profile might look like something like this at this point there is velocity zero the fluid sticks to the surface and it attracts the other layer towards itself okay so the velocity so consider that i have got a uh, pipe okay i've got a pipe okay let's consider uh, the lower portion of the pipe okay so imagine that the fluid with universal uniform velocity is entering the pipe okay now here uh, we have got friction this pipe has got friction which means no slip condition so when this pipe has got friction or no slip condition then the fluid particles are going to stick to the wall so in the initial region let's say in this part what is going to happen is that some particles will stick and some particles and it is going to drag the second layer okay but then there will not be a lot of effect on the other layers okay so same goes here as well it is going to affect some layers but not all of them so what happens is that the velocity profile is basically changed initially and but it remains constant in the middle and then it is changed initially what happens is that as the flow moves as we move further distance so let's say that this is the distance x direction okay and this is the radial direction or the diameter of the pipe r so as we are, we are going to move forward what is going to happen is that more layers are going to be uh, sheared away and more shearing means that the shear layers are going to drag each other's back so if i'm going to draw here so if initially it was like this then it is going to drag other layers as well okay so the profile is going to look something like uh, more more curvish than uniform and then more curvish so it's, it is looking like this so let's say that in the first uh, part only two one and two layers were yet and in the second part as we move away from the entrance region as we move in the x direction then let's say three layers were dragged okay so the flow now looks like this so let's move further so as we move further what happens is that more particles are going to be dragged okay so three then four then five okay and then the fifth remains constant and then we also one two three four and then here is our velocity profile okay so this is called velocity profile now what we want to say is that at this point the frictional effects were present but above this point if we look at this point this here the velocity is same it means that the frictional effects were uh, not present and if we look here the frictional effects are present below this point above this point the frictional effects are uh, not present same goes here as well okay and then there comes a time when the velocity profile becomes constant okay so what we are going to do is we are going to join these lines okay like that so this straight line this straight line 
to specifically straight velocity profile. If you observe, the velocity profile was straight. And below or above these points, due to shearing effects, the velocity profile was changing. So this line is called boundary layer. Okay, so below this line, below this region, okay, this line, viscous effects, viscous or shear force effects are present. Okay, this is called velocity boundary layer as well. Okay, and in this region, in this green region, okay, if you see this green region, here the frictional effects are not present. Okay, because uh, not all the layers can shear away, some of the layers slip within each other. Okay, so this region, uh, the region within the green lines, is called a rotational flow. I R R O T A T I O N A L, a rotational flow. A rotational flow is also called core flow because it is in the center of the pipe okay so remember whenever a fluid enters a pipe there is basically a development of boundary layer within boundary layer the viscous effects of the friction effects of or the shear effects of the pipe are present and uh, above or above the, their boundary layer and the flow does not uh, have any viscous effects and this is called a rotational flow uh, frictional effects are negligible and the velocity remains same so you can see the velocity profile is same so this is all about uh, velocity boundary layer or boundary layer or boundary layer region. So what happens after uh, boundary layer develops? So basically what happens is that after this uh, velocity profile is developed, that it remains same, constant throughout the pipe. Okay. And once it remains constant throughout the pipe, then it is called fully developed flow. Okay. Because the flow or the velocity profile has developed. So it is called hydrodynamically hydro dynamically fully developed flow okay and the point where the point of the distance from here to fully developed region okay so let's say I'm going to change the color so distance from here to the point where the flow becomes fully developed okay is called hydrodynamic entrance region hydrodynamic entrance region is the region from the pipe inlet it is the region from the pipe inlet to the point at which the velocity profile is fully developed to the point where the velocity profile is fully developed this is called hydrodynamic entrance region okay so hydrodynamic entrance region okay and this length this is called hydrodynamic entry length denoted by L H okay hydrodynamically entry length okay so after this point after this uh, point okay the flow is fully developed so it is hydrodynamically fully developed flow fully a flow is said to be fully developed when the normalized temperature profile remains unchanged as well so you need to understand that the temperature profile and the heat transfer is also uh, constant so these are something which we need to uh, keep in mind these terms developing pro velocity profile a fully developed pro velocity profile so if i'm going to look at these three first three profiles these are developing pro velocity profile okay developing they are trying to develop to uniform velocity profile okay so this these three are called developing velocity profile and once it is developed completely okay the velocity profile remains unchanged but this is called fully developed velocity profile so let us look at an example of an aerofoil shape okay this is an aerofoil shape okay if you see the wings of an airplane usually uh, they are also made of this aerofoil shape so what happens is that when the plane is moving forward the air basically at uniform velocity strikes the airfoil okay so let's say that this is all uh, uh, fluid with an average velocity constant average velocity okay as the air is going to strike this uh, airfoil what is going to happen is that here there is uh, no slip condition so what happens is that some of the fluid is going to stick to the surface so velocity will be zero here but then it will try to increase and then increase so it is going to look something like this so you can observe here as well this is the velocity profile it is constant but then it is becomes due to no slip condition it changes okay and if i'm going to make a boundary layer it is going to look something like that 
but because this is uh, this is something which is observed in uh, at very uh, small level of prototype level so we and the dimensions might change so you can observe this phenomenon now you can see this is decreasing okay here you can see it is changing no stick condition can be observed here okay so let us take a look at some of the lecture notes and here is an introduction to the entrance region okay uh, this is something which we have covered just now is that between entrance and fully developed flow so between entrance and fully developed flow is a region called hydrodynamic entrance region so this region is called hydrodynamic entrance region okay what is we saying is that a uniform velocity profile enters at entrance so just at the entrance you can see that the velocity profile is uniform okay because of the no-slip condition, so what happens is that when the fluid strikes the boundary, okay, because of the no-slip condition, the friction at the wall reduces the velocity, so the velocity is getting reduced, okay. And to conserve the mass, so the mass flow rate at the entrance and the mass flow rate at the outlet is same. So to have the same amount of uh, mass, the area under this curve, so if I have this uh, velocity profile uniform, and because there is some shearing occurring, so what is going to happen is a velocity profile of something like this is develop okay and in order to have the same mass flow rate okay the area under this curve should be same so the area under this curve should be same so that is why to have conserve the same amount of area it, it uh, the velocity basically it decreases here but then increases here okay that is why in the last we get an increasing velocity profile shape so to conserve the mass the velocity at the center increases and compensate the velocity decreases which has decreased at the wall so it follows that as the fluid moves deeper okay the velocity near the wall decreases further and near the wall near the wall the velocity decreases whereas at the center the velocity increases okay both up down left right so if you look here and there okay the velocity profile increases till it merges with the other side so this velocity profile if i'm going to change the color okay so the velocity profile for the upper portion and the lower portion increases until it merges at the center okay so this after this part the flow becomes fully developed that is when the velocity profile stops to develop as it flows deeper inside the pipe so after this region the velocity profile will remain same and constant similar to the developed fully developed flow and what is important to note that since the mass flow rate in and mass flow rate out is same so the average velocity whether it is developing flow until here so until here it is developing flow or after this which is fully developed flow this is developing and this is fully developed flow the average velocity is same you can see that this is because of the conservation of mass so if you guys would like to observe uh, the pipe flow and how it develops you can have a look at this example here you can see the velocity profile is average and then here you can see that there has been some decrease and then it becomes uh, average and here at this point there is no slip condition something like that so here the profile looks like that okay so you can observe this here this is how it moves so let's take a look at hydrodynamic entry length and if you take a look and consider fluid flow in hydrodynamic entrance length so if i am going to look at this hydrodynamic entrance length okay so what happens is that wall shear stresses tw wall shear stresses okay are the highest so initially the wall shear stress is very high it is the highest at the pipe ended where the thickness of the boundary layer is smallest so you can see that the thickness of this boundary layer is smaller when the shear stress is high but the thickness of this boundary layer is small okay so uh, what happens is that this thickness of the boundary layer increases okay and the amount of shear stress decreases okay therefore what happens is that the pressure drop is higher at the entrance region that is why we are studying this LH the hydrodynamic entrance line why because the pressure is dropping higher so if the pressure is uh, 1 here then the pressure increases to P1 plus some value x so it decreases it decreases to some value x okay so there is a pressure drop so the pressure drop in is higher in the entrance region of the pipe and the effect of entrance region is always to increase the average friction factor so for the, for the entire pipe the average friction factor increases this increase may be significant for short pipes but negligible for long ones so let's say that if i got a very short pipe okay 
and I want to see the pressure loss. Okay, then the hydrodynamic length is uh, quite large compared to the size of the pipe, so the pressure loss will be higher. Okay, there will be some decrease in pressure. But if my pipe is very very long, okay, compared, and my entrance region is only this, okay, then the pressure drop due to hydrodynamic entrance length (LH) will not be very high. Okay, the pressure drop will be due to only the frictional effects of the pipe, not due to this entry length. So in this case, the LH can be ignored. So uh, the significance of LH is that this LH is very useful in calculating the loss of pressure in pipes when the uh, distance or when the size of the pipe is small. So the hydrodynamic entry length can be calculated uh, differently for laminar. It has to be calculated differently for double blend. Okay. Why? Because when the initial velocity profile is laminar, then there are different formulas to be used for calculating the hydrodynamic length LH. Okay. The mod number depends on velocity and for laminar flow, the LH laminar depends on 0.05 times the Reynolds number multiplied by the diameter of the pipe. Okay. And if let's say the flow is turbulent, there is a rapid mixing. Okay. So what happens is that the LH is basically the constant equals to be 10 times the diameter of the uh, pipe. So this is internal diameter of the pipe. So th these are formulas to calculate LH, uh, hydrodynamic entrance length. After the creation of boundary and layer, there is a unique types of velocity that fluid particles go through. We call it velocity profile. Let us visualize it. Consider a fluid entering a circular pipe at a uniform velocity. A fluid in motion comes to a complete stop at the surface and assumes a zero velocity relative to the surface. That is, a fluid in direct contact with a solid sticks to the surface and there is no slip. This is known as the no-slip condition. The fluid property responsible for the no-slip condition and the development of boundary layer is called viscosity. The layer that sticks to the surface slows the adjacent fluid layer because of viscous forces between the fluid layers, which slows the next layer, and so on. So, the flow region adjacent to the wall, in which the viscous effects are significant, is called the boundary layer. But in the blue region, there is no boundary layer surrounded, so the frictional effects are negligible, and the velocity remains essentially constant in the radial direction. This blue region is called, irritational flow region. As the fluid passes by, the thickness of this boundary layer increases in the flow direction, until the boundary layer reaches the pipe center and fills the entire pipe. Remember, at first, water velocity is just a function of pipe length and pipe radius, but when the boundary layer fills the entire pipe then velocity will just be the function of pipe radius. Keep that in mind. So, when velocity varies only on radial direction, then velocity profile develops which makes calculation easy, as it only depends upon one direction. That is pipe radius. The region from the pipe inlet to the point at which the velocity profile is fully developed is called the hydrodynamic entrance region, and the length of this region is called the hydrodynamic entry length. 